Now let's learn a little bit about functions. So far everything we did happened in one function, the main function, which is a must to have for every C++ program, because anything at all, and this is a rule that's running, that's happening in a C++ program, is happening inside of a function. Anything that is outside of a function is probably just some C++ code to prepare some stuff for the purpose of uh, being able to to do neat stuff inside of a function. But everything pretty much happens inside of a function. So as you imagined, you don't only have to be inside one function throughout your whole program. That'll be pretty stupid to need to have one single file that only has one function that's as long as who knows what. You can of course create your own functions. And while your program is running, you can decide to jump into those functions and do some stuff that's over there. So here are the rules of making your own function. First it starts off with a type. It can be integer, it can be unsigned, short, it can be whatever type you'd like it to be. Later on we will learn exactly what does it mean that there's a type over here by the beginning of the function and how to use it and how is it useful. Um, another thing you can put over here which we'll be using now is the keyword void which as we will see will mean that there is no type and basically let's leave this on for later just know for now that to begin making your own function you have to start off with either a type uh, be it integer or float or whatever you want it to be or you could just leave it void which means no type next up we give our function a name let's call this my function so this can be any text uh, which is valid for a variable name. If you remember, a variable name can be uh, anything, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, as long as the number is not the first uh, character in the, str in, the, in the name. And you can use, of course, the underscore uh, at the beginning, in the middle, or the end of your function name. And, of course, do yourself a favor and make a very nice explanatory, understandable name for whatever it is your function will be doing. And then we need an opening and closing parentheses. Later on we'll see how this is useful because inside over here we'll be putting some stuff. Uh, we will see all that later. For now let's just say that this is just one of the rules you need to do when creating a function. And to finish it off you need to have a opening and closing brace. And that's about it. You have a valid function right over here. This looks pretty much like the uh, main function, except that over here it's integer and the name is main. Over here it's void and the name is my function. And now the million dollar question. How do I get from the main function to my function? Because every single C++ program starts with the main function. So if my program starts off being here, how do I get to there? Well, it couldn't be any easier. You just type that function's name, spell it exactly as when you made that function, and use the opening and closing uh, parentheses, and finish off with a semicolon. Now here's exactly what happens. Our program starts running, so the compiler will be right over here. It starts going, and oops, it seems that we're going to have to take a little detour and go into the my function. So, we wait right over here, and the compiler puts himself a little footnote remembering that um, we were holding right over here in the main function when uh, we found out we have to go take a little trip to the my function. So, we skip over and we start doing the my function. We do whatever it says inside over here to do. And then once it's done, our program doesn't just uh, end right over there, we go back to exactly where we were holding inside whatever function we came from. And we continue right after that place. So make sure you understand this correctly. If I would have, a, for example, a uh, third function over here, which we will call my function 2, and I will call my function 2 from my function, what will happen is very simple. The program starts running, we call my function. We go to my function. In programming terms, this is called calling. I call that function. 
So the program jumps over to this function right over here and starts doing whatever stuff it has to do here. First instruction, well, seems we have to take another detour and go to my function 2. Let's put a little footnote right over here and start doing my function 2. Once my function 2 is finished, we continue doing whatever is right after where we came from. And once that is finished running, we continue back to exactly right after where we came from before that. So think of it as a yo-yo that has another yo-yo attached to it, that has another yo-yo attached to it, etc., etc. Uh, the first yo-yo will uh, cause the second yo-yo to drop down, which will cause the third one to drop down. But at the end of the day, every yo-yo will bounce back up, will wind back up to exactly wherever it came from. And that yo-yo will come back, will roll back up to wherever it came from, etc., etc. Uh, by the way, here's an important note. The compiler will read and compile everything in the exact order that it reads it inside your uh, file, which will obviously cause us a problem because as we get over here and the compiler reads my function, unfortunately the compiler doesn't know what is my function because so far all it's compiled is this stuff over here, but it didn't see anywhere any mention of what my function is. That's because the explanation of what my function is comes only a lot later in the file. So you will have to take uh, your function creation uh, right over here and um, put that somewhere before the main function begins working. So let's put it just like right over here, for example, uh, somewhere safely before the main function is created. Um, then again, when our program, when our compiler will start reading this stuff over here, and it gets to my function, it won't know what my function 2 is. So we're going to end up having to put this thing over here right before, right at the beginning. So before using any function or variable or anything in, you, in your program, make sure that that thing is already declared, is already created somewhere before, so that the compiler will know exactly what it is at that time. To test out and see if this is working, we're going to print out little messages in each of the functions and um, this will signal to us where exactly we're holding in the program. So in the main we're going to say uh, main and then we'll print out some message in my function saying that we're in my function. See, um, if we for every reason if we manage to see the words my function in the program that'll be biggest proof that we have succeeded in coming into the function my function because this message is not being printed in main it's being printed over here and finally let's print some message also in my function 2 and finally as we come back to the main function let's print out some uh, something else to signal that we came back back in main because this is happening of course right after we finished uh, going to those other functions as a matter of fact let's do the same thing for my function over here back in my function and when the program run runs we will see exactly in what order things are happening so let's have a look over here in our program we see that first of all we begin by being in main as we saw, we started off by printing a message main. But then, instead of seeing the message back in main, we suddenly see something else. Uh, we see my function. So this proves that we successfully went into my function, which is how my function got printed to the screen. And then again, instead of seeing the message back in my function, we see the message my function too, which means that right over here, we skipped ahead and went into my function too. Then, when this finished running, and he finished, and he came to the second, uh, to the closing brace, we came back and continued right after the call to my function 2, and we continue running whatever is left to do, like what it says over here, back in my function, which is the next thing over here, back in my function. And again, once this function is done, we finish and get back to wherever we came from, which is right after the call to my function, and now back in the main function, we continue doing whatever instructions we have to do over here, including typing in something so that the program finishes.